Hey friends, i tell you what, I was thinking I wasn't going to make it with you today. Uh, I've been racing around, I had to make a little road trip, and uh, I wanted to have some time with you, but I just didn't think I was going to make it. But I do want to take a few moments with you, even though I'm late this evening, I do want to take a few moments with you. I want to talk to you about um, your relationships, your, your dependence to one another, the, the reliance we have on one another, that's not just something that we um, uh, selfishly use, but the thing that God uses to sustain us. Yesterday morning, I began to talk about Reuben and Gad and how they were going into the promised land. And the Bible said that um, as they were going into the promised land, they, were, they, they actually uh, stopped short because they were... Uh, they had a lot of livestock, cattle, sheep, and the, the place that they come to just before they entered into the promised land was perfect for them. And they just, you know, they analyzed it, kind of did the math. They said, we got to stay here. I mean, this is where we need to stay. Let everybody else go possess their land, but this is where we need to stay. And so they, they talked to Moses about it and they said, you know, <laughs> we have cattle and this land is perfect for cattle. I think it's so important that we don't move forward. And uh, so Moses, he was, first of all, he was a little bit chapped about it. He, he said, you know, here's the problem. Your fathers did this, and they caused the children of Israel to wander in the wilderness for 40 years, and it's their fault. Uh, they're the ones that pulled this stunt, and he said, here, you are doing the same thing. You're wanting the children of Israel to go on into battle, to possess their land, face their giants alone, and become discouraged, and they'll just want to quit. Because that's what their fathers had done. Their fathers just just based on the bad, on the bad report that was given to them, they turned and said, "Let's go back to the promised land to Egypt." I mean, can you see the the effects of a bad report in your life? That's why it's so important that you not allow a bunch of negativity to come. And we're surrounded by negativity right now. I'm just telling you something. Everybody's got a bad report. Don't believe it. I'm just going to tell you something. I don't believe it. I'm not buying it. Uh, I'm not buying the story. I'm, I'm just not buying it. I don't believe the numbers. I don't believe a lot of the things that they say is happening. I think there's an agenda behind it, a plan behind it. And I'm not saying that there's not a lot of people that have gotten sick, but this thing has been used as a tool uh, to infiltrate the, the lives of people in ways that I've never seen that ever happen before. So anyway, that's just, it's amazing how uh, bad news, negativity can actually cripple an entire nation in just a very short amount of time. Actually, the whole world has fallen to their knees based on this. And, and so that's, it. that's how quickly, I mean, just stop and think about it. How quickly did this happen? But so Moses was just saying, look, you know, that's what happened to your fathers and, and the, the entire, based on what 10 people had to say, the entire nation of Israel wanted to return to go back to Egypt. Uh, and he said, I'm not going to have that. And, and so they were very comforting to him. They said, listen, that's not what we want either. They said, let us basically build our defenses around our families, our wives, our children, and that way they'll be protected from whatever else. And they said, we will go before Israel to battle and we will stay with them until every man has possessed his inheritance. And so Moses, he was just, uh, he thought about that. And he said, okay, I'll tell you what, God's going to let you do that. But he said, if you don't do it, he said, if you don't do it like that, he said, be sure you're, fin you're, you're that that's sin. And he said, let me just tell you something. Uh, your sin will find you out. And what he was basically saying is your sin has consequences. Much more than you realize, your sin has consequences. And so they, they agreed to go ahead and do that. And so they went before them, Gad and Reuben, the, both the tribes of Gad and Reuben, they went before them. And, and, but here's the point that I wanted to get to you is the fact that this was such a broader view of why we gather at church. Um, my lack of participation affects more than me. Unfortunately, we live in a very self-fulfilled generation where people, I go to church based on what did I get out of it? Well, I didn't like the music. Well, I didn't like the singing. I didn't like the lighting. I thought it was too cold. I was uncomfortable. And they really are missing the broader perspective 
of the responsibility that we have to one another. And uh, you, you are responsible, according to this scripture, for your brother that they don't get weak. You're responsible that even though you're comfortable, you have what you want. It's very important from God's standpoint that your brother and your sister don't fall short under the load that they're carrying because many of them are carrying things. We are here to strengthen one another. That's the reason you go to church. It isn't just so you can like the songs. It isn't just so you can be pleased. You're going because you have a responsibility to those that are around you. And I want to just say that submission and accountability is the only true way that you can fulfill the law of love, and that is to serve one another. Submission and accountability, that is so important. I mentioned that in yesterday's message, and it just is so, it is so strong to me that I just felt like I, I really need to say something to you about that. Submission and accountability. If we don't have that, then, then we're not walking in the love that God has for us. It's my connection to you. The Bible says we know we've passed from death to life. Why? Because of how we respond to the needs of those that are around about us. Let me just tell you something. If you're going to be effective as a believer, you're going to have to be accountable. You're going to have to be submitted to those that are around about you. God's not looking for for big shots. He's looking for people that will take the heart of a servant and wrap a towel around them and wash the feet of the people that are around them. I'm just telling you something. This is what God needs. And, and we, you know, the Bible said we know that we have passed from death to life. How? How do we know that? Because of our response to the brethren, because of what we do in behalf of those that are around about us. The fact that I even know you're saved is demonstrated through your reaction to the people that are around about you. So that's how love is demonstrated. Reuben's and Gad's, their submission to God was seen in their accountability to others. I want to say it one more time. It's very important. Reuben and Gad, their, their, their submission to God, their love for God, their submission to God was seen in their accountability to others. And if you don't have that, I'm not sure about your relationship with God. I'm not saying you're not saved. I'm not, I'm not saying you're not born again, but I'm just telling you something. You're not walking in a fruitful relationship, and you never will, because the plan of God is still connected to the body. You know, this is a body is what it is. Uh, members in particular don't show up by themselves. As a matter of fact, if I was to grossly said here, cut off your arm and put it in the corner, uh, you wouldn't say, well, there's Bob's arm. Uh, there's Bob. You would say, well, there's Bob's arm. If they saw the, the member of the body disconnected from the body, the, that's the first thing they would say is, what happened? What tragedy took place that separated that member from the body? Well, see, it's the same way for you and I. When we allow ourselves to get separated and find division with one another, I'm just going to tell you right now, between the mask and the unmask, I'm, I'm very disappointed in how many believers have become at odds with one another because of who wore a blooming mask. Let me just tell you something. If your commitment isn't deeper than that, then I'm not sure you really have a commitment at all. Now, that's just a fact. And you have a responsibility to one another, and you're going to have to hold to that. You're going to have to be someone who stands in strength for those that are around about you and to lay your life down for them. So I want to say it again. Reuben and Gad, their submission to God was seen in their accountability to other people. Oh, that was just a, it, and and it 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 isn't a matter of trusting that they won't take advantage or disappoint you. That has nothing to do with it. I mean, you can't go around feeling like, well, they hurt my feelings, so I'm not coming back. Do you know how many people have left churches because, well, they hurt my feelings? Feelings have nothing to do with this. Feelings have nothing to do with it. And if you separate from the body because someone hurt your feelings, you may never find your way back. I mean, that's just the bottom line. You have an accountability that is undeniable to those that are around about you. And Moses said to Reuben and Gad, he said, if you, if you separate yourself from them and you don't go fight their battles with them, he said, it will be sin to you. You know what real sin is? I mean, come on. It isn't smoking and chewing and, and cussing. It isn't, it, that's, <laughs> that's not really what, what I don't think God looks at as sin near as much 
as what was said here by Moses. If you allow people to face giants by themselves, he said, it's going to be sin to you. And he said, don't you think that your sin won't find you out? Don't you think that there's not going to be great consequences as a result of what you did or did not do? And more than ever before, it's very important that you tie into your local church. Uh, wherever you live, if you've got a church, you get in there and you back that thing. You ain't got time to flinky dink around waiting on something else to happen. You have a responsibility. Somebody say, what is it? To strengthen those that are facing giants by themselves as they're trying to possess their land. They're facing walls. They're facing things that discourage them. And I'm just going to tell you something. When somebody gets discouraged, it's awfully hard to pull yourself up out of that hole. You need somebody else. You got to have somebody. I'm just going to tell you, there are people that are depending on you. And if you've got your feelings hurt over something, uh, let me just say, get over it. You know, get over it. We need you in the body of Christ. We need you in the church. And, and, and what you're doing is you're allowing your life to be stolen from you by, by something like that. So I want you just to take that, that message from Reuben and from Gad. I want you to be thinking about that, if you would, as the fact that their, uh, their, their responsibility, their love for God was seen in their accountability to the people that were around them, that they are not going to allow you to go through your battle alone. See, just because you show up, I'm just telling you right now, there are times when you show up at church and there's people that take courage because you said hello to them. Just by your being there made a difference in that person's life. They're facing sickness. They're facing bankruptcy. They're facing the loss of a loved one. They're facing things that you don't even understand. They're facing giants. And it would be sin to you to selfishly withdraw yourself to the corner because something hurts your feelings and allow somebody to face their giant alone. God takes that very seriously. Let me just tell you something. The most important thing in this world is not things at all. It's people. And we are all in the people business, whether we know it or not. And if you want to please the Lord, you find that what's important to him. Well, what is important to him? Try John 3, 16. For God so loved the world. He loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. And if you want to please God, you're going to have to start finding things that are important to God and get on that boat. Now, that's the truth. Now, what is the important things to God? People. People. So I'm asking you to step to the next level of, of servanthood. Come on, wrap a towel around you and find somebody's feet that you can wash. You know, when you wash their feet, you see the, the road they've traveled. In other words, until you come to the place that you serve someone, you really don't know what they've been through. You see the bruises on their feet. You see, you see the wounds on their feet. How do you see that? Because I'm serving them. I got close enough to them to serve them and wash their feet. Then I understand the road they're on. You understand that? And it's so important that you make the commitment to be a blessing. If, if I have enough time and enough battery here, I would like to just give you the, the three stages of growth. I did tell our church this. It's very important. First stage of growth is feed me, clothe me, burp me. Most people never get out of that. Second stage of growth is now I can feed myself. I can believe for me this. I'm going to get me a new car. I'm believing me for a plane. I'm believing for me this. That's an adolescent stage to where you're only trying to get something for yourself. The third and the final stage of growth is the stage that God wants to bring you to, which is now I can feed you. I can wash your feet. I'll stand with you as you fight your giant. I'm with you 100%. I'm not leaving you alone. You're not facing your battles by yourself. I'm with you. And that's pleasing to the Lord. That's pleasing to the Lord. So would you make that commitment with me today? Make that commitment to love one another and serve one another. Come on, it's time for us 
<laughs> it's, it's time for us to, we've been laying around now for two, three months wondering what in the world is going on. It's about time that we take control of our life, our circumstances, and begin to walk in faith toward God. And let's see the miracles actually manifest from the kingdom of God, because that's God's desire, to see his power demonstrated in the lives of those that are hungry, that are thirsty, that are afraid, that don't know what to do. That's your responsibility. Amen. I love you guys. I mean that. Thank you, thank you for allowing me to come into your heart and life. Thank you for allowing me to have a few moments with you. Uh, I pray that you'll I pray that you'll take this to heart. Uh, for me, you can push like and share or subscribe. If you'll take these and just simply do that, it will be such a help and a blessing to me. And uh, I'm 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 out traveling at this point, but uh, I'm going to be back tomorrow, and hopefully we'll be there on time. So I'm looking forward to seeing you then. Thank you for joining me, all of you. Uh, that have joined me today. Thank you for doing that. Thank you for being my friend. I mean that. Thank you for being my friend. And I look forward to seeing you tomorrow, okay? You have a great evening. It's going to be a great one, and I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.